Yeah, they won't stop for you. You've got to stand your ground. All right, all right. You told me that before. Thank you very much. Quiet, Crowbait. I don't know why you're so scared to make him stop for you. That's the only way you're going to get a lift, and it's nigh on to 16 miles into town, if that's where you're going. You've got to stand your ground. You now, told you're... me that, now beat it. Well, you go back to your chicken. Well, they don't need me. You're the most unsociable young fellow I ever seen. Reckon I wouldn't waste my time with you, except I've got a son of my own. He's in the army now, and I miss him. And milk and time, I miss him a lot. But there's something familiar about you. Seems like I seen you somewhere before, but I can't seem to... You, you never but... saw me before in all your life. It's just that trace of the human race that makes us all look familiar to each other. <laughs> now go back to the barn. I ain't so sure about that. When I first seen you out here in the road, I said to myself, says I, if that young fella had on a uniform, I'd swear that... Here comes one. Watch me. I'll make him stop. You gotta stand your ground. You gotta stand your ground. <laughs> Minute. That goes double. Wrong signals or not enough ground. Say, me wants to ride you. Think I'm going to stand out there and get run down so you can ride? Why knew a fella did a fool thing like yeah, that once? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you try it yourself once? Can't do no harm. Well, maybe you got something there. Walking 16 miles can. <laughs> IQ. We might both have been killed. No, I think I'm all right, thank you. Mm. No bones broken. Don't worry, miss. He looks pretty lively to me, too. Why don't you move over and let the crow sit there? They got plenty of room. What were oh. you doing out here in the road anyway? All right, I'm sorry. I should think you would be. Jumping in front of cars like a maniac. Only an imbecile would do a thing like that. <laughs> that does it. That really does it. Oh, no, you don't. You'll find everything in the back to change that tire. Aren't you going to help me fix it? I know speak English. I only operate from signals. Surely you don't expect me to change it. Why not? Your car, your tire, your gas, and you ride. Well, of all the nerve. Move over, brother. Ain't right, boy. It ain't right. You ought to help her. She's not in my department, farmer. I've met these overall jobs before. She takes over and leaves you flat. Well, if you're going to be like this, well, maybe I'll have to help her. Stay perched. I guess there just isn't a gentleman left in the world. Fortunately, I don't need any help. Does she mean us? Not me. I'm essential. Those bumper jacks are dynamite. It'll never stay. Burned, huh? Plenty. Count ten. It helps. Now I fix the tire and you ride me into town. 
Right? Right. Can I help you? Yes, go back and sit on the fence. Well, but I'm very handy around automobiles and things. Yes, sir, I'm right I know, handy. I know, I know. I don't doubt it. Go on to help, huh? No. No. See, I wanted to help him and he wouldn't let me. He's a mental case. It sure wasn't a very nice thing he did to you, miss. At least I don't think it was. Whose side are you on? Wasn't it your idea that I risked my neck on the road? Sure. That's the only way you get a hitch to town. It's nicer out here in the country amongst the birds and the bees and chickens and such. What do you want to go back to town for anyways? For a long time, all I've dreamed about is going back home. Back home to town. That's why. You see, I don't trust you. I wouldn't have a disposition like yours for nothing. Cause a lady all this trouble and then you don't trust her. Well, nice knowing you folks. Just ignore them, miss. Nice lines for this job. I thought I was lucky to find it. Wish it was mine. Oh, this car doesn't belong to me. I took it. I'm a kleptomaniac with good taste. Ha <laughs> ha, don't give me that. You've got little Miss Idle Rich stamped all over you. You're wrong. I work for a living. Half what? Well, I'm... I'm sort of a chauffeur. Hmm. In uh, that uniform? My employers are very lenient. And uh, speaking of uniforms, how do you manage to stay out of one? Anything like that strictly between me and my uncle. You should say my uncle and me. It doesn't sound so selfish. He comes first. I'll say first, last, and always. Well, you're uh, out of gas. Oh, well, uh, didn't we pass the filling station about a half a mile back? Uh, so we did. Why, you... I know, you hate me. Very well. We'll both sit right here and dream together. I don't mind. No wonder the armed forces don't want you afraid of a little old hike like that. All right, Miss Smartset. What did you say your name is? I didn't. That's right, you didn't. Vitamin? The person doesn't know whom she's talking to these days. Hmm, doesn't she? I mean, I'm afraid I said some cruel things to you. I'm sure when a fellow isn't in the armed forces these days, there must be a good reason for it. Uh, should be. And yet thoughtless people like me do say such cruel things and make such terrible accusations. Any young fellow must hate being out of it. That all depends on the man, doesn't it? Take a deserter, for instance. He doesn't mind. Until his conscience gets to work on him and he's caught and made to realize what a fool's bid he made for freedom. That must be horrible. It's not the best deal. You wouldn't be... What? A deserter? I told you anything like that strictly between my uncle and me. If it isn't too personal, who is your uncle? The most influential man in the country. Really? Who is he? Uncle Sam. Did you ever hear of him? <laughs> I'll give you ten on that one. Hey, what is your name? Come on now, they must call you something. They do. They call me Willie. Are you kidding? No, that's my name. What about yours? Marion. And that's on the level. Really? <laughs> hey, you know what's wrong with us, Willie? We ought to change names. <laughs> I 
I think those cops mean us. Could be. Say, you weren't trying to pick them up. Certainly not. That's probably the first honest thing you've said. Get out. Officer, what's this all about? Lady, you're driving a stolen car. Me? Yes, you. You just picked me up, remember? Let's see your driver's license. Officer, it must be my other bag. I've only got my lipstick in this one. Well, what's your name, or don't you know that? You probably wouldn't believe me. Just call her Willie. That's what she told me. You drive her. I'll take her. Oh, wait Come a minute, on. officer. You don't want me. I'm just a pickup. Who's this guy? Don't let him get away. There's probably a reward offered for him. Mm, very funny. Now, if I'm not too inquisitive, where did you get this car? Why, it's Alvin. And who's, who's Alvin? Alvin's my... Well, Alvin's just one of the most promising young men in this country that... Nah, get oh, in. Come on. Come on. Get in. Slide over. I'll drive. What'd they bring in, Ryan? Same old stuff. A dame and a guy. Was he annoying her? She picked him up in a stolen car. She won't give her name. There's a name for that, ain't there? Mm. Ten years. Is there a picture in it? No, her nylons are ripped. I think I'll take a look. Sit down. You owe me six bits, and you're not leaving. Matron, will I be detained here long? That depends. Sometimes we keep them for life. But I'm not a common criminal. None of them are. That's what makes the work so interesting. Every case is different. Are they trying to phone long distance for me? Young lady, they're doing a lot of telephoning for you. They're grilling the young man and searching the car now. Oh, dear. Oh, you poor kid. Did some guy get you in here, too? I suppose, in a way, he is responsible. He made me stop for him. Ain't it terrible the way some men do these things? If I hadn't stopped for Herman, I wouldn't be here either. Did you pick him up? Yeah, ten years ago, and married him. Look what it got me. You haven't married yours yet, have you? Why, well, I hardly know him. Well, believe me, you never will know him. I never thought Herman would strike me, but he did. I screamed and defended myself, and neighbors came in, and then they saw that pipe on the floor that he hit me when they called the police. How dreadful. Yeah, but he was always so gentle, until he suddenly gets the idea and he starts saying, it's a free country, ain't it? It's a free country. Well, it is. Yeah, well, I remember what my father went through, one of the finest men that ever lived. I remember what he went through during Prohibition, and I said to Herman, listen, no matter how hard the stuff is to get, it ain't worth it just to feel dizzy. Don't try and brew it. At least now you can get it. You got the government behind you. You mean he makes it himself? Well, he tried to make some in the furnace, and we got into an argument, and he hits me. Have one? I don't smoke. What are you in here for? Wife beating. Your own? Yep. What is she, a midget? I didn't hit her. The darn thing exploded, and the pipe flew off, and I was trying to pick her up when the neighbors came in. What thing? Hmm? Thing? What thing? It's a free country, ain't it? Yeah. Well? You talk like you're in love or... <laughs> yes, if you think so, Mr. Bailey. The young lady refuses to give her name. Oh, you're glad. Oh, it's of no importance, Al. Well, very well. We'll hold the car and release her. Tell Mr. Bailey I want to speak to him. The young lady wishes to speak to you, Mr. Bailey. Uh, he says he has nothing to say to you. You're to return home on the train. He'll see you then. Oh, he will. How nice. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Bailey, what are we going to do with the young man that's with her? Oh, yes, yes, there's a young man who's with her. He'll talk to you now, miss. Tell Mr. Bailey I have nothing to say to him. I'm not coming back. Never again is he going to push me around. <clears throat> Did you hear that, Mr. Bailey? <laughs> well, you better let me talk to the sergeant. Oh, sergeant, uh, we're holding the car and releasing the young lady. Uh, thanks for your cooperation. Bye-bye. Well, you're free to go, miss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Don't you mention it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Sergeant. Yes? What about the young man who's with me? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. You know, I might have forgotten. After all, I see no reason why we should hold him. There's no occasion for the smile, Sergeant. No? No. Oh. Ryan, release the young man. Yes, Sergeant. <clears throat> I bet you're terribly angry with me. Nope, all my women do this to me. You're conceited. 
Have it your way, Willie. Where do we go from here? Now you're trying to pick me up. Just giving you an opportunity to turn this into a wonderful day. I gotta show you our town. It's a crackerjack. Is it? Haven't you seen the new library? Never noticed. Don't tell me you haven't seen the new fire engine. Why, you just press a button and the ladders go up in all directions. Sounds small. There's also a little park. It's a gym. Right on the river. You can take me someplace. Anywhere if you guarantee no cops. I promise, no cops. Hey, that's for us. Taxi! Hey! Do you know where the Hammond place is? Sure do, miss. Will you take us there, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, pardon me, but I think I got on the wrong bus. Do you know the Hammonds? Yes, I'm the secretary for the family. Hmm, big league stuff. Well, you just drop me off here as well as at the gate. Relax, I can smuggle you in. Besides, the family's in New York. Oh, gotta be like this, huh? No, but I just thought that maybe you might... <laughs> I sure would. Whatever you're trying to say. You know, I'll bet you're pretty regular. I hope you won't be disappointed in me, Marion. Willie. Yes, Marion? Who's Alvin? Oh, Alvin. I was engaged to him. Is he a big guy? He's powerfully big. Why'd you take his heart? I felt I just had to get away. Sort of to break the spell? Well, Alvin's so impatient and marriage is so serious. Uh-huh. A girl just has to have time to make up her mind. Uh-huh. How long were you engaged? Well, we've known each other all our lives. We're supposed to get married day after tomorrow. But it's a long story. Uh-huh. Why do you keep saying, uh-huh? Alvin sounds a little on the dull side. Oh, no, he's really a very fine fellow. Exceptional. Maybe just not for me. Uh, you know, Willie, you keep losing the range. Once you got it, you got to stick by your guns. Uh-huh. <laughs> Change. Thank you. You can go out through the lower gate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. When Hard Rock Hammond built this place, he certainly didn't spare the dollars. He wanted it to be the showplace of the town, and it was. Why, do you know that people used to come for miles around to see the place? Anybody can tell that this is your hometown. Well, it is in a way. Nobody home, huh? The caretaker must be around someplace. The gates were open, and then there's always Wiggins. Well, if you're the secretary, haven't you got a key? Of course. Where did I put that key? Now, don't tell me you've lost it. I know what we could do. Don't say it. I know what you're going to tell me. What? Maybe we could find a window and climb in. Very good. How did you get? Hunches. I get them. Are you sure you work here? Of course I do. My, but you're a suspicious person. Well, all right, all right. We'll find a nice low window and climb in. You ought to know where there's one. I do. I have one right around here. Here it is. It should be open. The lock's broken and never been fixed. I thought you said the lock was broken. Oh, you're right. Stuck. Give me the bags. Come on, you're next. Oh, no, that's not the way. You go through and open the front door, and I walk in. Do you always have an accomplice? It's much easier with one. Hurry up and open the door. The mansion is ours, like this. You'll be happier on a rock pile with a pick. Come on. Well, what's the charge? Breaking and entering. We saw you climb through that window. Now, come on. Why, all of her friends get in that way. Ask the young lady. Hey, where is she? Oh, there she is. She works here. Willie, please explain to the gentleman that you belong here. I don't know why you have to drag me into this. Why don't you tell him just to go away? I think you like the notoriety. <laughs> She's a personal secretary to the Hammond. She lost her key. <laughs> I don't believe it. Sounds phony to me. It is. I'm not... Willie. What are you saying? You want the truth, don't you? And uh, you promised there wouldn't be any more cops. Remember? I wish I had a lead pipe. I'd use it. You would use you. I know. You I hate, hate me. You. Well, if you work here, you can prove it. And if you don't, we've got a place for you two. Mr. Clancy, 
Ladies first. I hate you. Yeah. And then we gentlemen. What'd they bring in this time, Ryan? Same stuff. Another guy and a dame? No, the same ones. Guess they're hitting the bottom of the barrel. You mean the same guy's back twice in the same day with the same dame? That's what I said. First they're in for car theft, now they're back booked for trespassing, breaking and entering. Maybe burglary. Sounds like they hit the jackpot. Well, such an earnest couple deserves the privilege of the free press. How I tried and tried until they locked me up. Say, uh, you think my, my readers will be interested? Sure, those who can't spell out the words, flash your tone with a picture. Buddy, you said something. This I gotta see. Come on. Young fellow, sorry you want to see you. Oh, yes, sir. Not you, I said the young fella. Here we go again. Just keep our little nest cozy, pal. I shall return. I certainly will. Hurry back. All right, call. Hey, that's mine. No, it isn't. It's hey, mine. Hey, I, hey, I tell you, get sorry. away, get away, get away, get away. Get away. Oh, oh, where's that nice sergeant who was here this afternoon? Oh, the nice sergeant? Well, he got tired looking at the same faces, so he retired. But if you don't like my face, it'll be just too bad for you. <laughs> Order. Sergeant, do you mean to tell me the same people come back all the time? Yes, annoying, ain't it? But sitting here, we run into so many who have criminal tendencies. But uh, back they come. And out they go. Oh, is that so? I think I know her. Me too. Now, uh, you refused to give your name on the first charge and got away with it. Okay. Well, we'll start from there. Oh, Sergeant, you don't seem to understand. I don't want my name in the record. Oh, and you don't seem to understand that this isn't an invitational affair. <laughs> I'll have respect. I don't want the notoriety. Keep after her, Sergeant. She told me your name was Willie, but I don't believe her. Mm. You're the young man who broke into the Hammond house. He is. And this young lady was your accomplice. She was the warped brain behind the job, Sergeant. Do tell. Before I fell in with her, I was a clean-cut, decent young chap. Mm, you look it. Thank you. Such a conceit. Now, young lady, as long as you haven't given your name... I'm afraid we'll just have to start giving you a number. <laughs> Respect for the sergeant. Sergeant, just between the two of us, may I whisper something to you? Whisper something? Of course. Come around. Say, I, I think I interviewed her two years ago. Two. Boys, boys, get away. Can't the lady speak to the gentleman in conference? Get away, get away. Where's your manners? Uh, and you two, go on, go on. Get away, get away. No. I do understand, Miss. I thought you would. And you think that at a time like this, that any differences that you've had in your private lives should be kept strictly from the public. That's right. Well, a misapprehension like this could influence them. I know those voters. The case is dismissed. Thank you, Sergeant. I'll see that Mr. Bailey hears about this. Mr. Bailey? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I, I know her. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Willoughby to have Sure. Don't you remember? I met you last year. You were down launching a boat. I thought you were supposed to marry Mr. Bailey. Sure, you're supposed to be in New York with him. What's the matter? A rift? Sergeant, you can't win. Indeed, you can't. You're a good sport, Miss Hammond. What about a picture shaking hands with the sergeant? That's a good idea. How about whispering in his ear? That's a better one. Oh, all right. That's it. Oh, this will be perfect. Yeah. Or, uh, Miss Hammond, now that the boys mention it, your face is familiar. Magazine covers, high society and the Sunday supplement, smearing your face with cold cream before and after for charity. I might as well admit it. I am Wilhelmina Pierce Hammond, but I thought if you... Sure, knew... you might have been caught out with the wrong guy. I should have sent my pedigree to your press agent. Don't you dare talk that way to Miss Hammond. Oh, sorry, Captain. Captain. I hate you. Hold it. Hey, what's oh, the name? Hey, brother, I've got to hang your name. You split with Alvin Bailey the third. I'd like to get a statement from you. He's a very ambitious fellow. He might get in your hair. No statement, please. Marion, surely you don't think I meant to embarrass you. I thought if I told you who I am that you'd the be... The build-up you've got doesn't blind me, sister. I'm not interested. All I want from you now is my suitcase. I left it over at your little cottage in the reception hall. Well, of course. Uh, Miss Hammond, my men will drive you home. Thank right you, this sir. way. You're welcome. Uh, say, I didn't get your name, bud. I know you didn't. It wouldn't mean any more to you than 10 million others. How about a picture, Miss A Hammond? picture, of course. He's going to take a picture. Step out, Go on, me? shoot your picture. Okay. Thank you. Was it a blind date? What's his name? No, he's one of the first ones I've had in a long time with my eyes open. Not bad, is he? Very good, I'd say. Come on. Come on, don't keep the lady waiting. Uh, here, here, no words with the sergeant. Get in before he loses his temper. <laughs> Go on, get in, get in, get in, get in. Bye. Well, goodbye, Miss Hammond. Goodbye. Take care of her, boys. Pull out. Is 
there anything else we can do for you, Miss Hammond? I hope not, thank you. If there is, I'll call you. You can leave by the lower gate. Thank you. How'd I ever get so involved with you? You're getting out of my life, understand? Why well, I'm supposed to be getting... I know I'm a bother. You hate me. Marion, if you go away, I'll scream! Well, I was just going back to open the window. Please don't be angry with me. I just remember where I put the key. It's been right in his pocket all the time. Marion, don't leave me! Wait for me! Marion. Yes, Miss Hammond? I want you to know I saw the uniform in your suitcase. Uh, snooping? No, but when you went for the gas, it was open, and when I tried to close it, I saw the ribbons on your uniform. You closed it. Thank you. Marion, don't go away. I want to talk to you. Go ahead. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why? For running away. What kind of a life can you hope for? Shame and escape. Maybe you can get by with it for a while, but in the end, you'll be made to realize what you've done. You said so yourself. I was doing all right till I met you. Oh, dear. Hmm, no lights. Why don't you pay your bill? I can't understand it. We never discontinued the service. Have you got a match? You know, Marion, I'm worried. I could be put in prison for harboring you. You should get 20 years to life. But I'm getting out of here before you throw me to the police again. All right, skip what might happen to me. But I don't want to see the worst happen to you. Let me drive you back to camp. Give yourself up before you're court-martialed and shot. You're a good kid, Willie. Of course, I want to go back. That's why I burned so every time you sounded off. But I can't go back. Ever hear of a medical discharge? Are you serious? In like a lion and out like a lamb. That's me. Marion, don't go. You let me keep stabbing at you. I saw you limp when you went to get the gas, but I thought it was only a hitchhiker's blister. What a fool I am. I should have trusted you all the way. But you could still be in uniform, couldn't you? Yeah, for a while and for official occasions. But I figure it's strictly a fighting outfit. Mine belongs among my souvenirs. It's chilly in here. Let's light the fire. I love an open fire. All right, Willie. It's good to be back in the old hometown, isn't it? That's all you dream about out there. Has it changed much? No, it's perfect. Just what I wanted it to be. Did you notice the little square in front of the old courthouse? I hoped it'd be there. It's always been there. I've noticed that. Does your family know you're coming home? I bet they'll be awfully glad to see you. I haven't any family. I'm an orphan. But you've lived here all your life. In a way. That's a strange answer. Willie, I've never been in this town before in my life. What? I'm the prodigal come home, but I had no home to come back to. Oh, but it's all your country. It's your home. Yes, and it was good to fight for it. But a lot of what my home is has been a dream. I wanted it to come true here in Plainfield. Why Plainfield? A fellow gave me this town. He grew up here. He told me all about it. He fished in the river, knew love for the first time in the park. He took his oath on the steps of that old courthouse. And civvies with a band playing, he and the other guys were drafted with him, marched to the station and took the train. But always he talked about my hometown. He liked the way the winter comes and the way the spring breaks. And it's spring now. Over there, I learned that a guy has to do his own dying. And I said to this GI, brother, if ever you're out of this, you're going to do your own living. And you're going to start it right there in Plainfield. Must have been an awfully good friend. Mm, the best. We shared the same foxhole. I left him just three miles outside of a place you can't pronounce. I shouldn't have looked back, but I did. He looked up and yelled, keep going, Marion. It's the shortest way home. It's your hometown now. I give it to you. Was it all so terrible? Yeah, for the others, but I'm the lucky one. I'm the one who came home. All right, I'll speak to him if you say I must. Yes, Alvin, I can hear you. But I'm not a common thief. I only borrowed it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Can't you say anything besides, oh, dear, you're losing the range again. Alvin, I'm sorry if it was embarrassing for you, but you don't want to make a mistake either. 
Yes, I know it's too late with the wedding in two days, but... Are you going to let him do your living for you? Talk back to him. Alvin, don't you dare come down here. It won't do you a bit of good. Man? What man? I'm sure I don't know who you mean. Oh, him. Well, he's just the new chauffeur. Yes? Oh, yes, Mother. All right, Mother. Goodbye, dear. <coughs> Alvin, the whole family are coming down in the morning. He's very angry, says he's going to punch you in the nose. Thank you for putting me on my guard. But you can't stay here. Why, sure. You don't want to disappoint Alvin, and I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. I'm the new chauffeur, remember? And I start right out by being fresh. Now he's got a reason to be sore. You're fired. Mm -hmm. Not after that one. You're getting the range again. Now, don't let your family and Alvin push you around. Stick to your gun. Why do you think? Well, it wasn't a new idea. I wanted to be sure that spark was still there. Late family, what am I going to do, Marion? The Hammonds have always done the expected thing. Why, they're the backbone of proper society. Grandfather said that a girl Look, just Willie, I don't care what the old boy said, but I'm sure he did his own living. Willie, I like the way your eyes sparkle. Surely, Miss Wilhelmina, this can't be you. Of course it's I, Wiggins. Where have you been? Yeah, but this, this is not Mr. Alvin you're kissing. I wasn't kissing him. Uh, Wiggins, Miss Wilhelmina inquired, where have you been? Young man, I resent that. That's right, where have you been and why no light? Uh, oh, why, you know this is Lodge Night. And Miss Wilhelmina, you know I haven't missed a Lodge meeting in over 25 years. That's why my brother members of the Lodge made me the captain of the drill company. And also the grand welcomer for the Plainfield Claims You Committee. Uh, what did you get the medals for? Swimming? Yes, swimming. I hate water. Young man, let me inform you. I was presented with these medals for having the best drilled company in our entire organization. The best drilled in deportment, discipline, and marching. Which, of course, are things that you would know nothing, absolutely nothing about. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miss Wilhelmina. The Brother Lodge members this evening congratulated me on your coming marriage to, uh, Mr. Alvin. The snobs. You were a little premature. Why no light? Hmm? Was it? Why no light? Yeah, oh, the lights, lights, lights. Oh, oh, I, I flew a fuse. I mean, I uh, blew a fuse. I just put in a fresh plug. How long have you been eavesdropping? Eavesdropping? Oh, Miss Wilhelmina, you have cut me to the quick. Oh. Young man, let me tell you something. I have been a sort of a secretary and general manager for this entire state for many, many years. In fact, many years before this child was born. Oh. <coughs> Wilhelmina? Miss Wilhelmina. Does the family uh, know this uh, person? Right now, I am sort of a rumor. Wiggins, he's working here now. You know how difficult it's been to hire a chauffeur since Stanley was drafted. Oh, sister, yes, I, sister. I understand the health problem. But that is no excuse for you kissing him. Miss Wilhelmina, I dislike very much doing this in your presence. Will you please step aside? Young man, I shall have to throw you out. Wiggins, oh, uh, aren't you. you forgetting yourself? And if you want to tell Mother and Mr. Alvin what you saw, go right ahead and be an old tattletale. Ooh. I didn't tell him about that butcher boy, did I? What butcher boy? Well, he was a big hulking fellow. I was only eight years old at the time. Oh. Wiggins, go to bed. Mother and the family are coming down in the morning. The servants are arriving tonight. Now go to bed right now. Yes, Boy. miss. Young man, your quarters are up over the garage. And always bear in mind, remember at all times, you are now in the service of the most sheltered young lady in America. We've already discussed that, Wiggins. I shall be back shortly to lock up this place. Good night. Good night. What a pushing around you take, Willie. You're even afraid of that character. Marion, you'll have to go. You can't stay here. Very well, miss. What time would you like the car in the morning? Now, don't be difficult. If you should need me before the folks arrive in the morning, you'll find me over the garage. Good night.
<laughs> well, well, well. Hello, Wiggins. Thank you. Uh, Camille, you take the trousseau right up to Miss Wilhelmina's room. We were them. Morton, get the luggage. Uh, Mr. Alvin and his trainer stopped at the police station to play Miss Carr. Mm. Uh, where is Miss Wilhelmina? In her room, Mrs. Hammond. Uh, tell her we're here, please. Yes. Don't bother. Sis is picking up this broadcast right now. Young lady, next year you're going to be sent to finishing school. And you stop listening to the radio. It's ruining you. Who is that? Oh, huh? uh, oh, oh, him. He's, uh, he's the new chauffeur. Miss Wilhelmina said you knew. Uh, yes, of course. Of course I know. Uh, certainly I know. Um, Patricia, go in the house. Huh. There was more swoon to him in that picture in the Times. I thought his eyes would be brown. Those pictures really are in the papers, huh? Yes. Yes, they are, in all of them. It seems that the press is giving you and my eldest daughter quite a bit of uncalled for notoriety. I'll speak to you later, young man. Just take the car around. Oh, uh, can you drive? Yes, Mrs. Hammond. Hmm. But we should go in the house. In my day, it was the groom who made the passes. There was such a nice one who used to give me riding lessons. Harriet, we never mentioned him. Not since he accepted that money from your father. Well, I can dream, can't I? Patricia, why don't you go in the house? My goodness, I have never seen such a child as you are. Go away. I don't want to see anyone. Relax. It's not that newfound wolf howling. It's your little sister. You shouldn't talk like that, Pat. I can read, can't I? They mentioned you on the radio, too. Called you a fickle heiress. Are you alone? Of course not. The whole tribe's collecting. Camille and Mother and Aunt Harriet with her knitting. Boy, they're gonna skin you. You come in here. What are you staring at? You don't look mauled. What'd they feed you in jail? Bread and water? I didn't eat anything. It was all a mistake. But you were in jail twice. Gee, I wish I could drive. I'd pick up some fella. Did you marry him? Of course not. Well, he's not bad, considering how empty the roads are. Who is it? It's Wiggins. Miss Wilhelmina, your mother wants to see you downstairs before Mr. Alvin gets here. I'm not coming, Wiggins, till I've already been through too much. I'm staying in my room all day. Very well, I'll tell her. <clears throat> tell me, Pat, what did they really say? Oh, they had a full ten rounds of top-blowing. Mother said, it's a disgrace, but of course it's all a misprint. Then Alvin held up this picture and said, how could she do this to me? How can I explain it to the women voters? In the face of this, I'll never be elected as zoning commissioner. Boy, were they corny. Wasn't he worried about me? No, he said you shouldn't have ripped your stockings. It looked common. They don't credit me with having any mind or motion of my own. Just because Marion is, is regular, I suppose I can't speak to him without having my knees shaved. Well, I don't know. One paper said you told the police you'd call them if you had any more trouble with them. Who is it now? It's Aunt Harriet, dear. Auntie, please. Well, don't you want to hear from the voice of experience? Your mother's terribly upset, dear. Really, you shouldn't lock yourself in. It's all over with Alvin. I've nothing to say. You mean it's all over with you? There are other men. Not for you, dear. The more prominent you are, the fewer there are. What about Harriet Hammond? Is that why you never married? Yeah, what was the dirt? I'm old enough to know. Huh? He wanted money more than he wanted me. By the time my tears were dry, I'd knit my way through the First World War. Now I'm knitting my way through another war, alone. Because after that, no acceptable man came along. You're trying to frighten me. Yes. Alvin's your sort. Now, don't be silly and throw him over for a stranger with an empty promise. I didn't know you were so unhappy. I'm not. I'm not happy either. You should take your problem up with that man on the radio. Boy, he's wonderful. Pat, I took it up with myself, but too late. Uh-oh. Well, Wilhelmina, I... I hardly know what to say. The scandal has my head reeling. I... Oh, I... I... I 
think I'm going to faint. I... Mom, save the nerves. Oh. If you only knew how corny you are. I don't want to hear that word corny again. You're becoming a juvenile delinquent. You're incorrigible, you little, uh, um, pest. Well, I'll think of something. Leave the room. Yes, come along, Pat. You're too young for this. Oh, how am I ever going to know? Don't you want me to be ready? You will be. Think it over. A man in the hand right now. Well, Wilhelmina, I suppose, Mother, I shouldn't have behaved as I did. <laughs> Apparently, that was only the beginning. Um, who is this young man? He's just a fellow who likes this town and wants to live here. Yes, but who is his family? He hasn't any. Oh. Oh. Then you, you mean to say that you, you really know nothing at all about him? Must I? <laughs> well, you can see what happens when you don't know who people are. Oh, Alvin is terribly upset. I didn't hurt his car. No, but all this publicity has impaired his political aspirations. It's not dignified. And with Alvin on the ticket? Well, I'm not on the ticket. No, but your fiancé is. I ran away from Alvin because it was all I could think to do. The point is, I don't love Alvin. I never have. I'm not going to stay in step. It's a long time for keeps. But that's what we're thinking of, dear. Your future. Mother, you're trying to say that I'm in love with Marion. If I am, I didn't realize it. You mean you care nothing about this stranger? Everyone seems to think I do. Who am I to argue? Look at the future I have with him. Mr. and Mrs. Nobody Plainfield. She picked him up and they were in jail together. That's how it all began. He wanted to show her the fire engines and take her for a walk in the park. But she said, no, no, take me home. He did. To a great big empty house. A cold house that has never meant a thing except that it says the Hammonds are very rich. But then something happened. While she stood there with him, it began to ring with the sound of his heart. He brought a yearning with him that filled it with warmth and a promise of the future. That's what he has, and that's what I'm going to share with him. Once you've gotten over your infatuation, you will find that all you have left to share is what you've given up for him. That isn't fair to any man, not even a fortune hunter. Camille. Yes, come in, Camille. You'll have to try this on if you're to wear it. The wedding's off. Certainly it isn't off. Wilhelmina, we have tried being rational with you, but since that seems to have no effect... What will? Put on your wedding dress. I am not going to put that dress on you all. Get out of here. Get out. Yes. Get right out of this room. What am I going to tell Alvin? You've already made up your mind. Why? I think there's too much carbon monoxide coming out of that exhaust. You said it, Chief. It ain't good for your lungs. <coughs> Take a deep breath. Get the briefcase. Yeah. Get my acceptance speech in it. And also the calcium tablets. You want this afternoon paper with your photograph in it, Chief? Yes, with the comments. I won't want her to see for herself just what her little rumpus has done for my popularity poll. You said it, Chief. <gasps> oh, Wiggins, I am so upset. My nerves are just in a dither. No, 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 no. Now, just be calm, be calm. Yes, yes, Wiggins, I, I must be calm. I must be calm. Oh, Mr. Alvin, I am so glad to see you. I know, Wiggins. Oh, Alvin, I cannot manage Wilhelmina at all. She's behaving like a volcano. She won't even come out of her room. You're giving her too much consideration. Oh, really? Is that it? Is there anything I can do for you, Chief? No, relax. Relax. Hmm. Odd fellow, isn't he? If we don't ignore what's happened, we can't expect the public to do it. Yes, but she seems to have made up her mind. So have I. When I proposed to Willie, I didn't expect it all to be smooth sailing. I appreciated the fact that the burden of our public life would be on my shoulders. Now Willie seems to resent the methodical hand I'm taking our marriage plans. She said it takes some of the romance away from us. Oh, that's nonsense. That's why we quarreled. But you have to be keenly rational today to get things done. Oh, Alvin, you have so much sound sense. I'm going to talk to her about this. But right now we must lose no time in correcting the impression she's made. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Mohammed wouldn't go to the mountain. Very well, we'll have the wedding right here. The best way to squelch this rumor that Willie has thrown me over is to have the wedding. Here? Tomorrow? Yes, it can be simple and to the point. Then after the wedding, I'll make a statement. I'll simply say that my wife 
rightly objected to an extravagant wedding. She preceded me here to plan the simple ceremony. And we are the happiest couple in public life. Alvin, do you... Are you corny? Patricia, that word! Someday I'll think of something to stop you, young lady. But how will that explain the young man Wilhelmina picked up when she left you? I'm afraid the newspapers may want a follow-up story on him. That's on my shoulders, too. They sure will. What was he doing on the road anyway when she picked him up? Yes, Patricia. Oh, my dear, how bright you are, isn't she? Oh, but Alvin, we must get rid of him. You don't realize how imperative that is. I'm equal to the job, Mother. Oh, the chief's in top condition. Uh, yes, but I'd rather you use your head, Alvin. <laughs> Is Willie in her room? Yes, yes, she is. She didn't want to be unkind to the stranger. You know how she is. He probably threatened her, and it got into the papers. Now, you send the telegrams and phone the minister, and I'll take care of him. Oh, Alvin, you're such a comfort. You make everything sound so simple. Thank you, Mother. <sighs> oh, Patricia, you frightened me. Mother, if you knew how... Uh, don't you dare say that word. What's wrong, Mom? I'll see you later. Uh, child. He held the gun close to her head. She screamed... Li oh, <laughs> definitely corny. Oh, what am I saying? My... Well, I mean, I... But I must talk to you about this, this vagrant you were in jail with. Under what conditions did you employ him? He didn't have a job. Did he give you his availability certificate? Why, no. Uh, then I can't very well give it back to him. I'm glad the papers didn't pick that up. You must be more careful, Wilhelmina. It wouldn't look right in print that the future Mrs. Alvin Bailey illegally hired a chauffeur. But I'll straighten him out. You'll straighten no one out, Alvin. But Willie, don't protect this fellow against me. You've already given the press something for the backstairs gossip to hang his hat on, so I'm taking over. Why? Because you're the pitiful victim of a conniving upstart. I'm not pitiful. Well, I mean, our marriage plans have been too great a strain on you. Alvin. Relax. Get a lot of fresh air. Breathe deeply. But, Alvin, I don't love you. Time to talk about that after the wedding. Patricia. Better move away from here. You'll get oil on you. You sure got Wilhelmina. What? What's happened to Miss Wilhelmina? I bet you didn't call her Miss Wilhelmina when you got arrested. <laughs> Are you trying to work up into a quiz, kid? Well, I know everything. Mother despises you. She said so. What does your sister say? She's on Alvin's shoulders, and he can handle you, too. When Mr. Bailey wants me, he won't have to look for me. He's bigger than you are. He's got a chest expansion, too. That's hot air, kid. Now beat it. I mean, please go. What's your other name besides Marion? Don't you ever read the newspapers? Sure, and I listen to the radio, too. All they called you was a pickup. What were you doing on that road, anyway? Coming home the hard way. Now... Get out of here, will you? I heard you the first time. <sighs> Boy, you sure look corny in that coat. And you look worse, too, when Alvin gets through with you. He can lick you with one hand tied behind him. There, who's corny now? Why, you... Patricia? Hit him, Alvin. You didn't give Miss Hammond your availability certificate, so of course she couldn't employ you. Now clear out. When she wants to fire me, she'll tell me. Throw him out, Alvin. Looks like I'll have to. Uh, didn't Miss Wilhelmina tell you that one of my duties is to keep the firing range clear? Don't leave with your right, Chief. Stop that, both of you, please. Don't hit him, Marion. He has a heart murmur. Well, no wonder, blowing himself up like that, he probably rattles. <laughs> you meant that. <laughs> You're disappointing. I told you not to leave with your right, Chief. You're fired. I'm in the clear. He changed his defense on you. It's quite obvious, young man, that you are not welcome here. I told you not to hit him. 
What am I, a guinea pig? Apparently, you're a young man who's trying to make a place for himself in this town. But we are very particular who lives here. Well, I'm particular too, Mrs. Hammond. In fact, I sacrificed a lot for this place. Don't you threaten me. Uh, if we have to find another job for you to, to be rid of you, why, why, we'll find one. We should throw him in jail. What for, battery? You're to blame for this, Alvin. I wish he'd blacken both your eyes. Let him try. I'm on my feet now. Uh-uh. No? No. Come on, Alvin. I'll patch you up. A piece of steak. Hey, what am I doing with this thing? Oh, wait, Patricia, you annoy me. Young man, you have caused us a great deal of trouble. First getting into the newspapers with my other daughter, and, and now this. I'm sorry. They wanted to fire me. Well, Amina should never have engaged you in the first place. Uh, I don't even know how you got through our gate. Now that you're here, we don't know what to do with you. I haven't asked you for anything. No, but you know who we are, and you know that we can afford to pay for our mistakes. Very well, Mrs. Hammond. My time is worth plenty. I've learned it's the one thing I've got. What have you to offer? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, well, I happen to know that Hammond Investments have a few openings in the Western Desert, near Needles. It's a long way off. We'll be very happy to have you there. Mm, that's pretty rugged country. I know, a tank corps train there. Yes, yes. Now, we're putting in a new development. And the thermometer hits 130. Oh, but you'll be inside in one of our air-conditioned offices at a desk job. Believe me, young man, you will never be given such a wonderful opportunity again. I hope not. Besides, what are you here? At the moment, you're nothing more than a chauffeur. It's not even his coat. Stanley gets it back when he's out of the service. Why, that's well, Patricia. You're wonderful. I had no idea she was so blind. Mm. Now, go away. I suppose I should consider it. Oh, indeed. I believe you should. It's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, why am I arguing with you? You are discharged. I'll let you know. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Hammond. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> uh, come along, Patricia, darling. Yes. Yes, Governor. Go ahead, ask me. Sure, I've seen that nonsense in the papers about Wilhelmina and me. A rift? Piffle, it's just more of their smear campaign against me. They'll trump up anything to keep me from being elected. Why, Willie and I are the perfect couple, and we're going to be married tomorrow as planned. It's the governor. He wants us to drive over. He wants to see you, to be reassured that there's nothing to this scandal you got yourself into. You can't go with that steak. Mm -hmm. Let him wear it. We won't eat it now. If you'd hit him like I told you to, Alvin, we could have had that steak for dinner. Hello, Wilton. The little woman would love to come over with her mother, but I'm afraid I'm tied up. Oh, nothing really, just my last night free, you know. I thought I'd run over my campaign speech and put in a few more promises. Yes, Governor. Willie and her dear mother will be over. Goodbye. Did you have to do that to us? But you've upset the governor, too. I think it's very nice of the governor to take so much interest. Oh, uh, Wiggins, tell the chauffeur to bring the car around. Oh, uh, do you think it's wise to have him drive? Oh, you're right, Wiggins. I don't think this Marion fellow should drive. You're not there. Why not? Why, don't be a fool, Alvin. I will be with them. Of course, Mother. You see, I'm jealous of you, dear. That's encouraging, at least. Aunt Harriet, are you coming? You couldn't drag me. I'm going to stay here with this steak. Mother is coming. We're going to the governor's. It's about a 30-minute drive. Thank you, Miss Hammond. Isn't that muscle man you're going to marry coming along? No. And no wonder Mother discharged you. She didn't. She wanted me to go away to a better position. That was very generous of her. I hope you accept. Mm. Ah! He's kidnapped her! Alvin! Alvin! Yes, Mother, what is it? Oh, Alvin. Oh, my, my, my. Alvin. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's the matter now? What's the matter? It's double. He got her. Just because I stopped to powder oh, my she... nose. Here, here. It's smelling salt. Oh. Quick. I'll have the police pick them up. Oh, I, I heard her scream. Oh, now, take it easy, Mother. Take it easy. Relax. Oh. Breathe deeply. Oh. Uh, you take care of Miss Hammond. Oh. I have her. I... Mother, if you only knew how... Patricia! If you interfere with this thing, I'll... Well, someday I'll think of something. Oh. 
Wiggins, where are you? Where are right you? Right here. Oh, oh, my poor child. All right, now, all right, all right. Sit right down. Strictly from corn. Hello. Hello, Sergeant. This is Alvin Bailey again. I want you to pick up another car. No, no, it's not a habit. It's an emergency. Just a moment, I'll find out. What's the license number of your car? Oh, I don't know. The chauffeur always takes care of that. Do you know what it is, Wiggins? Hmm? Uh, number? Oh, uh, five, nine. No, that was my point. It, I forget. Can't you associate it with some date? Tonight would be a good one. Boy, I'm sure lucky if it's got a 13 in it. Ah, uh -uh, 13. I'll have to call you back, Sergeant. Think, all of you. Yes. Think, yes. Well, I know there's a one. There's a one. There's an in it. Yes. Uh, um, oh, oh, could it be 1066? Ah, 1066. No, that's William the Conqueror. Oh, of course. The Battle of Hastings. Oh, I remember that well. Hmm? Uh, what am I saying? Uh, uh, please, Gina. Uh, thank, thank you. Nice evening. Marion, you know you have to be practical. Why? I don't know why, but everybody's always trying to be that, and you must be too. What do you advise? Well, you can't go on being my chauffeur. Everybody's discharged you. Excepting you. Well, I'll have to get around to it too if you don't leave. Why don't you accept that job Mother offered you? Leave town? For your own good. What's a town? It's what you make it. The Hammonds made this one. Yeah, and in some ways they did a wonderful job. You're nothing here. Out there in that air-conditioned office, you can build a place for yourself. Uh-uh. Too lonely without you. But I don't go with the job. You know that. Even if I'm very persuasive, try me out. Marion, please be reasonable. I'm trying to be. You must plan on coming back. You didn't take your suitcase. Oh, um, oh Al Alvin, Alvin, do you think you should? Why, your silverware is probably in it. <gasps> Why, he's in the service. You mean he should be. This is very serious, Mother. Oh, Alvin, more trouble? Not for us. This means we're rid of him. He's a deserter. Ah! Now, do you know, when I found him with Miss Wilhelmina, I said to myself... What do I you mean? Thought, well, I looked at the young man and I said, Now, there is a young man who has done a lot of marching. That boy is running away from something. Well, you run down to the police station right now and tell them to get up here quickly. Yes. And they'd better come armed, too. These look like his papers. Take them with you. Uh, yes, yes. <clears throat> and don't come back without at least two officers. I'm sure he'll try to shoot his way out. Shoot his way... <coughs> shoot his way out? <coughs> yes, sir. I... Willie, would you want me to give up this town after I've dreamed of it and fought for it? But this isn't even your town, really. What will you do here? Follow through. Get a job and the right girl to say yes. She'll be about your side. Marion. Every evening after knocking myself out for two bits, I'll come home and stand at the gate and whistle. And she'll come running. You're egotistical. No, she knows what she wants. She'll throw her arms around my neck and I'll squeeze her till she squeals. Ah, oh, then when she gets her breath, she'll say, Dear, it's been so long away from you. And I'll say, Why, only this morning at six I left for the foundry. <laughs> Is that the best you can do, the foundry? Mm, well, not much money, but I'm happy there. And we'll swing through the gate and walk up to our little house hand in hand. And I'll kick my foot on a loose brick like I always do, and she'll say, Dear, when are you going to pave this walk? The place looks like a dump. It does. Well, who cares, I'll say. I never see anything here but you. Willie, I'm not a millionaire, but we're in real love. And that's what counts. Marion, please don't keep on talking to me like this. You know I can't walk out on the wedding. Now, take me back to Al. There you go, ringing up that Hammond cash register inside you. You're punchy from listening to the bell. All right, I'm punchy, but I belong here, and you can see you're not even welcome. Now I'm No. There are two sides to me, Marion. Okay, I don't want to get involved with twins. Well, Alvin, give them time. Who? Wiggins or that criminal she's with? Hello, Sergeant. This is Alvin Bailey again. Has our man Wiggins showed up there yet? Yes, Mr. Bailey. We're looking at his papers now. Uh, will you hold the phone, please? 
Will you stop crowding me, Wiggins? Can't you see I'm trying to do me duty? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I'm very sorry. Shh. Uh, Mr. Bailey, as I was saying, we saw the papers before, but we didn't realize who he was. Thanks, Sergeant. The Chief's coming out with the entire force. That boy's got quite a record behind him. He's an expert with a machine gun. A gunman. Oh, my poor child. Oh. Here they are now. Be stoic, Mother. Not a word to Wilhelmina. She'll be too upset if she knows what danger she's been in. Did he put the car in the garage? Of course. Well, do you want to know the word? He did kiss me. <gasps> oh, Wilhelmina. Free your mind of him, Willie. I know it was a terrible experience, but we'll never talk about it. Now, you must get some rest. Good night. Yes, darling, tomorrow's another day. If it's going to be like this, you're all so sweet. I guess it's for the best. Of course, dear. Good night. Oh, Alvin. Yes, dear? He's leaving. I know he is, sweet. Dream of me. Good night. I don't know what he told them, but they brought the band. And they should have brought the Black Mariah. Gee, they're not bad. It's your cops, Chief, and they brought their band. But why the band? Such inefficiency. They must think they've come for a swarm of bees, not a gunman. How did this happen? Well, I don't know, but I'll make it my business to find out. Flower's a little groupy, Chief, but it's the best I could do on short notice. Mother? Oh, uh, some unexpected guests, I'm afraid, dear. It's the police force. Boy, they're swinging it. Why are they here? You said Wiggins was sent for them. Um, Alvin sent him last night. That chauffeur you hired is a deserter. Marion is not. Alvin had no right to do that. He has every right. And he was considerate enough to keep it from you. But he didn't send for a band. <gasps> <laughs> Mother. Oh, Alvin, do you hear that? What will my guests think? The governor's my worry. The chief's right. Undoubtedly, it's a mistake. Wiggins is to blame for this. Alvin, we invited so few. Look, some of those people I've never seen before. Maybe they have come to hear my platform. You said it, Chief. But I'm not electioneering today. No, not for that eye. Oh, how do you do? I'm very happy to see you. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? It's very nice of you to come. How do you do? I'm very... You needn't tell me. Such resemblance. You're the bride's mother. I beg your pardon. I... Uh, yes, yes, I am the bride's mother. She'll make such a nice bride. Oh, and he's such a fine fellow. I don't believe I know you. Uh, do you know my daughter? Do I know her daughter? Is that a laugh? Well, we're old friends, cellmates, you might say. I told Herman, I says to him, I says, this is one wedding we ain't gonna miss. Oh, uh, we ain't? Did Miss Hammond send you an invitation? We read it in the newspaper about the uh, unexpected wedding and him. And I told Herman, we remember him. Huh? <laughs> Reads like Superman. By the way he treated those chaps with that machine gun, I tell you, he deserves all them medals. Uh, are you quite sure that you're not in the wrong place? Um, where did you meet my daughter? In jail. In jail? 
The corporal and I were cellmates. Were cellmates? Oh, he's a fine fellow. Oh, is the... oh, oh, Governor, how do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Hammond? Hello, Wilton. Glad you could make it. Now, don't tell me you ran into a door, Albert. The idea of the band. It isn't customary at a wedding. Are you carrying things a bit too far? Well, well you see, uh, we try... Uh, oh, uh, pardon me. <laughs> Excuse me, please, excuse me. Wiggins, what is the meaning of this? Uh, Mrs. Hammond, is it all right if I bring him through the front of the house? Where have you been? Oh, I never, I never was so mortified. My goodness, the way I spoke to that boy. And after all he's done for his hometown, I even turned him over to the police. And me, me on the reception committee. Wiggins, you are not making sense. Mrs. Hammond, you don't understand. My lodge arranged the whole meeting for the corporal, and I was supposed to meet him. But he slipped through on those civilian clothes, and I... Took a couple too many. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, the governor. Follow me. It's a great day for playing field, isn't it, Mrs. Hammond? Yes, indeed, Your Honor. Well, Commissioner, uh, I hope. Your Honor. <laughs> uh, just who is this Marion fellow, anyway? Uh, Corporal Marion Scott. The one man in his squad who got through. My folks have come from miles around to see this heroic soldier. And believe me, Plainfield is going to give him a real welcome home. Aren't we? Well, Governor, what are you doing here? The wedding. I was invited to the wedding. There just isn't going to be any wedding. Give the pass. Willie. Albert, I want to talk to you. I can't go through with this. Yes, I know, Willie. We'll have to postpone the wedding. There's been a mistake. This Marion fellow's a national hero. Is Marion Corporal Marion Scott? He spoke on the radio the other day, remember? Oh, yes, I remember. You'd have him in jail if you could. What a fool you are. Me too. Well, don't stand there moaning about it. Come on, let's hurry. I don't want to miss anything. Well, but I don't want the trains. Really, I tried to avoid it. Well, the Legion was supposed to, Iowa, when you were arriving. I've been watching all the trains and buses. I was afraid of that. That's why I hitched. Yay! Corporal, meet your mayor. I'm glad to know you, Ronnie. Corporal, the town's mighty proud of her son. Yes. Corporal, as governor, may I say that the whole state is basking in your glory. Well, now, hold on. You're going to have to excuse us, governor, but we got a day prepared for this boy here. There's thousands waiting to greet you. Well, then, let's not keep them waiting. Well, yeah, how about the wedding? Wait the wedding minute. can wait. The boy is more important. How about a picture there, Corporal? Is it okay for the governor and the mayor to be in? Yeah, sure. Uh, hold it. Uh, one more. Uh, hold it. Thank you. Why didn't you tip us off you were coming? The whole town's waiting in cheer. Well, there's ten million others doing the same thing I did. He's modest, ain't he? He's right. What's your first impression of Plainfield? Tell him, son. <laughs> Gee, that guy does a lot of dreaming. I, am I awake? Are you going to settle in the old town? Yeah, I'm going to live here. He's going to live here. Wait a minute. The whole town's waiting to see this boy. Come on, get outside. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Come on, get him on. If you'd ask me, I'd tell you. He's worth going after. Well, Amina, don't make a fool of yourself. I don't intend to. I'm in love with him, Al. The Hammonds are getting smarter every generation. You're not kidding. He told me I'm in love. And I am. Well, Amina, you're Dr. Alvin. Me. You're terrible. Snap out of it, Mom. You're corny. <sighs> you, you, you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I must remember that. to hit your ride, huh? Marion, please. I've got the rain, so... Isn't mine a swell town? 